Hi, it's MXUX. Uh, in this video, I have a uh, some news that came out uh, revealed there's a secret plan to harm LMC. I'm going to go through the details on that and go over some stuff I've said on that in the past. I go over some uh, news on the F-150 Lightning, the main competitor of the uh, Lordstown Endurance. Some details I think you might not know. And I'm also going to give some stats on some other uh, EV manufacturers. And I give, other than Reddit, my public uh, price uh, estimates uh, and uh, forecasts for ride stock. Hope you like the video. Let's get going. Hi everybody, this is MXUX. I'm doing a quick video here on uh, ride stock Lordstown Motors. Uh, we closed today up 5%, 6%, 552. Here's a quick look at the chart. We were up late in the day. A lot of the EV stocks got um, raised by the general market was up. And EV stocks in general were up. So uh, there's the chart, looking pretty good. I'm going to go through some news on Lordstown that's uh, relevant to my last video and Lordstown in general. Now this is a uh, article that appeared in uh, Seeking Alpha. Uh, you can look at the title up here, you can pause and, and seek that out on Alpha. Uh, not one of my favorite places. Lordstown under attack. Now this guy who is a bull on Lordstown, a stockholder, he wrote a nice rebuttal to everything and I'm going to show at the end of this video all of my, uh, well not all of mine, but a lot of my Lordstown uh, videos that you guys can look at to see where I go in detail about this whole thing about this attack on Lordstown. But anyway, um, uh, a C-suite, uh, you know, leaker uh, told this guy that the same entity is attacking Lordstown, the National Automobile Dealers Association, and that's the direct-to-consumer uh, model. Uh, one of the things Steve Burns did before he left was get a um, you know dispensation to do uh, direct-to-consumer sales in um, uh, Ohio. So, uh, and obviously they're going to do direct to uh, consumer sales in the um, fleet market. But anyway, uh, these guys, yeah, faces formidable deal, car dealers, and double standards. And he goes over everything here. And again, you can look this article up yourself. I agree 100%. There's more than uh, the auto dealers against them. Ford Motor. Now, this is Ford Motor. Now, Ford Motor Company. They have the number one selling truck in the country, and the trucks are the number one selling thing in the country. And Lordstown is their main competitor as of today in EVs. There isn't anybody else. Uh, Ford, in my opinion, and again, you can look at my past videos. And there's there's a couple books you can there's a couple references you can do on this. Go down the rabbit hole. Read Noam Chomsky, Manufacturing Consent about the uh, collaboration, formal and informal, in the press and media to manufacture an opinion on, an op on a topic. And I believe this is what's being done against Lordstown. And, and if you don't believe that's true, you can look up the CIA Project Mockingbird, which you will be shocked to see that the CIA had agents in every newsroom in the country in the 60s and who knows for how long uh, molding every news item. Anyway, Project Mockingbird, Manufacturing Consent. Anyway, just want to give you an idea of what Lordstown is up against. In 2019, Ford spent $2.28 billion on advertising. Okay? The American Dealers Association I have over here in the note spent $10 million. So that's uh, 2.4 billion total in advertising was spent on, let's say, Ford products. Everybody that gets advertising dollars from Ford or the American Dealers Association, CNBC, Ins uh, Business Insider, um, you know, you, you name it. Anybody that's on a platform that their advertising supports, the web platform or traditional media or radio. Uh, I'm sure they've gotten a word about Lordstown, and I have done, there's a video of mine called uh, Anatomy of a Short, 
And I've also done one on the Hindenburg Report. You can go over them. You can see what I'm talking about. This is very coordinated, okay? This is a coordinated attack. And obviously, because they fear <laughs> Lordstown, because of the efficiency of their vehicles, that is the deal. They know they're in trouble. Um, and let's just go here. Uh, Ford doubles lightning production on strong demand. Okay, so... Ford is um, strong early demand. They're they're raising. They're going to go up 150 million dollars on on uh, or 850 million on. Uh, that's not working. That highlighter uh, on uh, what they're doing. The number two automaker is targeting annual production of more than 80 thousand. Sorry about that. Uh, 80,000 and 24, 24 up from 40,000. Okay, so they're, they're talking about numbers very similar to what uh Lordstown is talking about. Okay, these are not far off. Okay, these are like uh, what Lordstown was talking about, uh, with its uh, um, uh, its numbers. Okay. They were pleasantly surprised. Now, <clears throat> question when their individual buyers will give up for gas power. So, again, their new target is 80,000 in 2024. Their, their past target was 40,000. They're talking about numbers very much like what Lordstown is talking about. Uh, 15,000 models next year. That's, it's, you know, this is Lordstown numbers. Uh, spring launch and uh, 55,000 in 2023. Okay. Now, they're going to launch the second generation Lightning in late 2025. All right. They already know the first generation Lightning isn't any good. It's too heavy. Let me tell you something. I'm going to make a prediction about the first generation Lightning. It's too heavy. They got it on small, they, I saw this one mechanic reviewing a truck and he goes, boy, those are narrow tires. They have put narrow tires on that truck to, for uh, rolling resistance and inertia to get the range out of it. It's going to wear tires like crazy. People are going to put bigger tires on it. It's going to kill the range. That's my opinion. It's 9,000 pounds. It's, it's twice the weight of the Endurance. They, they haven't made an electric vehicle. All they've done is put a battery in a ice vehicle that's a heavy duty vehicle that was never built with any concern about mileage um more optimistic the van we are excited we have 120,000 customer reservations now these i believe are the the top notch uh hundred thousand dollar f100s so uh, they're racing, uh, blah, blah, blah. They're boosting electrification. The point is, Ford's EV strength on leveraging is strongest been the F-150 and the transit van, okay? And um, you got Canoe mentioned here, too. Uh, now, here's a, here's a nice quote. The increased lightning production target has some suppliers read here, chip suppliers worried about the extra investment that it will entail and unsure of the demand for an electric pickup truck will meet Ford's expectation. It really puts suppliers, chip suppliers, in a dicey situation if the volume doesn't come through, said one supplier executive who asked not to be uh, identified. Uh, the redes If you watched my last video about the chips, the redesigned F-150 due in late 2025, so they are already going to redesign the whole Lightning uh, F-150. The whole thing is going to be redesigned. Okay. Uh, the T-1 truck architecture. The new T-1, which is a secret. Uh, and um, we're going to see here in this, uh, in this. So anyway, the point is Ford is now talking about numbers very much as what like, almost exactly like what um, Lordstown was saying. And their, uh, their suppliers are kind of balking at things but um, anyway that's where they are and if their demand is up I believe that the uh, endurance is a better vehicle more efficient lighter it's 
going to be up as well. But uh, anyway, I think the main takeaway from this article is they're doing a re complete redesign for 2025. Now, Ford uh, to induce, reduce, uh, introduce two new battery electric vehicles by 2025. So, one is for cars, where the second is for p pickup trucks. And this is kind of a scoop by Reuter, Reuters. Um, B platform for cars, crossovers, and trucks. It would not be uh, surprising to do that growing number of models and volume of sales. The, uh, the car crossover EV platform is going to be based on the Mustang Mach E. The truck uh, SUV, and the truck, by the way, their truck has independent rear suspension. It's really an SUV, it's not a truck. In the case of the larger electric vehicles, the new T1 truck ar uh, architecture is expected in late 2025. So they're doing a complete redesign of the whole thing by late 2025. And in that previous article, I glossed over it, but they're talking about, you know, having trouble meeting. They have a small production capacity. Now, I mean, they don't even know if they can meet the demand they have. Anyway, Ford is, it's not what you think it is. Uh, it might be using the redesigned Ford F-150 Lightning, which will enter the market in early in 2022 using a heavily redesigned F-150 platform. See, they're redesigning everything. They've rushed this to market. The Endurance has been under development for more than 10 years. Uh, Ford could also use for the uh, Navigator, and Ford uh, might include the Navigator. So you can see it's going to be the same. Uh, platform on their SUVs as their pickup truck. This is not a pickup truck. This is an SUV with a, um, a pickup bed on it. Uh, for the Lincoln Navigator and Ford Expedition vehicles. Now this is the kicker. Okay, so anyway, Ford's already bailing on the F-150 platform. They're going with the S SUV platform. It's gonna. Be, it's not a truck. It's a, it's an SUV with a pickup bed on it, which is what Rivian is. There's also an option to use a platform from Rivian. Okay, they're going to use the Rivian platform to put the F-150 on, which is even a more complicated, less efficient, heavier SUV with a pickup bed on it. These guys are um, in... Um, you know, I, I think they're scrambling big time. They don't have the capacity. Their, their suppliers, their chip suppliers are balking at them. You can see from that last article, they've got the hate machine out and the, the FUD machine out against uh, Lordstown. They're in a race. They know it. Anyway, I'm going to uh, pause right here and go on to the next section. Uh, hold on one second. Hi, this is MXUX. I'm back with this next segment here. I'm looking at the Go EV chart here. This is Canoe, 779. It's down 10, 20 cents after hours. There's the chart for today. Now, how this stock can be charting higher than Lordstown Motors, I have really have no idea. Um, you know, no vehicle, no plant, no nothing. And yet, <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. So let's just go over this next tab. Uh, now we're talking last video about the um, uh, Lordstown uh, potent potential for having other uh, other people come in and um, look for uh, low cost roads to mass production. There it is, Lordstown. Okay. And uh, startups come, become the next Tesla. But all vehicles such as UK Van Company, Arrival, and Fisker, different roads of the profitable mass production that almost broke Tesla. Uh, billions, Rivian plays phase 10 billion, uh, but people lacking Rivian's money. Here's the thing. Uh, Tesla struggled to make up Model 3. Okay, these new automakers including canoe and arrival they're all struggling with the idea of uh, uh approach over the years has been two billion on a big factor a factory big enough to build uh, 
2,000 or more vehicles, 2,000, 40,000 vehicles or more annually. So arrival is one. Uh, they're low-cost micro factories. How they're going to get any scale out of that, I don't know. Cost reductions. Um, micro factory 1.0 they're talking about. I, I don't see how this makes any sense. Uh, the transportation costs. Um, anyway, um, robots are programmed to do double or triple duty. I mean, how, you know, I don't know how they're going to get any production out of these small plants. They're going to have a bunch of guys in there putting wing nuts on studs and putting together plastic panels. I mean, really. Um, canoe. Similar strategy. Uh, we'll build a mega micro factory. Okay. As a hub for future, smaller future factories. Okay. Small electric van, van in the United States. Uh, reassemble pre-finished videos from China look all these makers canoe arrival uh, Fisker all of them they're stupid they ought to just go to Lordstown and uh, they can solve all their manufacturing problems everything is there I don't know what they're thinking I really don't understand this but uh, evidently there are a lot of people that are smarter than me at these companies. How they're going to build a vehicle in a warehouse with 10 robots and make money on it? What are they going to make? Three three vehicles a day? You know, Lordstown is making a, a, a vehicle every six minutes right now. Okay, that, that's just my two cents on that. This is, this is where Lordstown plant comes into play. I hope they're talking to these people. I hope they know what they're doing. Um, this is regarding uh, the new V vehicle to grid um, endurance fleet uh, stuff I went over in the last um, video just to mention um, Lordstown uh, Endeavor can be has the battery and the electronics to do vehicle to grid which is what is going to provide the power when needed uh, to the grid to power these new vehicles they are capable of it Lordstown is not Ford is they say um, but uh, anyway this is just to let you know uh, the EV rollout will require huge investments in strained U.S. power grids. So you got, uh, you know, the Texas thing, right? Okay. And then you got, um, here's what they're saying. Utilities, you put billions of dollars creating additional capacity. Okay. At the same time, they have to uh, replace uh, uh, old stuff. Uh, power sources with renewable energy and um, we're talking about rolling blackouts in California this is on the grid we have now Texas and California when we have um, electric vehicles I mean in any any numbers at all it's gonna put a tremendous stress on this and this is this is why the vehicle to grid of all these fleets is so important um, Here's a, a model utility with two. To, here's with th two to three million customers would need to spend between seventeen hundred and five thousand dollars in grid upgrades per EV. Okay, according to Boston Consulting Groups. So, this is a looming problem in the country that's going to have to be faced, and I and I think that this vehicle to grid is very important. But uh, anyway. Um, Caught, caught utilities off guard. Uh, I'm just looking for a quote here. Uh, see, EVs right now are less than 2% of all vehicles registered. More so in California. But Sandy Monroe says everything's going to be done by 2028. So uh, General Motors and Ford, blah, blah, blah. So Dalmar, this is... Uh, uh, Delmar is uh, building heavy-duty haulers, and uh, they say the need for massive investments in grid infrastructure and charging stations cannot be underestimated. So, 
the point is now we've got a, con a, a conflicting view here that says that they're jumping the gun but the point is we do not have uh, the grid now uh, to handle everything that's going on let alone when we put these EVs on the grid and um, Nuvi and uh, Envo that are doing the vehicle to grid in, uh, integration and uh, companies like Lordstown that are going to be able to do fleets that are going to have uh, these uh, the vehicle to grid uh, capabilities are very important companies like Aptera that are building self-charging vehicles are very important and also the efficiency uh, of a truck like the um, endurance that's even more efficient than than the um, uh, cyber than the Tesla vehicles so Ford and Rivian and GM are all overlooking this efficiency aspect of electric vehicles this is another reason we have to have lightweight efficient electric vehicles these power grid problems we have to have smaller batteries that go farther that requires more efficient vehicles that that requires more efficient power systems like the hub motors that don't drive a lot of mechanics to get the wheels turning all they do is turn the mechan the, the wheels and they're programmable they learn the driving habits of the, of the uh, driver and save even more energy and they're getting more power out of a smaller pack than they ever should that smaller pack puts a less demand on the on the grid the vehicle to, to grid aspect allows uh, the grid to, bleed, uh, to breathe these companies that are putting these 9,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 pound pickup trucks out, Rivian, Hummer, the Ford Lightning, massive batteries that take, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours to charge on a level 2 charger. This, this, is, this is going to blow the grid up. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents on that. I think everybody's on the wrong track. Um, you know... Tesla is a leader in this field. We'll see how the Cybertruck does. Right now, I've got a video on the Cybertruck beating the, the endurance beating out the Cybertruck in a lot of different areas. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go to my web page here, and I just want to show you guys that are Lordstown fans. Uh, this is uh, this is my paltry subscriber amount. If you're into Lordstown or Aptera or a couple of these other companies I follow um, let me just show these Lordstown videos here you can go to my channel and I have many many um, videos here on Lordstown there's more than even what's listed here you can find out anything you need to know about the technology the company the funding the economics I've got the um, uh, calls, conference calls covered. So, guys, please subscribe. If you're in the Lordstown and you want more news, check out my channel. Please subscribe. I'm trying to get it together. I'm upgrading. I'm in the middle of an upgrade of the technology here, and I'm trying to get this video out to you uh, in spite of that. So, anyway, I hope you liked the video. I'm going to try to put a close on this. Thanks for watching. Just some news uh, tidbits and... Um, some uh, aff affir affirmations let's do it that way drunken hobo talk anyway uh, I'm gonna put this out there and I have put this on reddit and it's in my other videos I have done the math uh, I'm gonna have to you can look through the videos here it's one of the last three videos where I go over uh, my math on a price target and again I'm not a financial advisor this is not financial advice um, the thing is, I crunched the numbers, back of the envelope. I think uh, the price right now for Lordstown, a fair price would be $35 to $36 a share. And with any success of the launch of the production vehicle and the validation and even going into limited production, I, can, I think that can 3x or 4x very easily. So I'm going to put that out there. I think we've uh, we're building some momentum now. Let's see what happens.
good luck in the market. Remember, this is a pre-revenue SPAC, risk on. This is a high-risk investment. It could result in catastrophic loss. Okay? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I need uh, to get you subscribers in here so that I can get my subscriber count on, get listed higher in these uh, YouTube results and all the rest of it. So thanks a lot. Trying to get the word out here. Good luck in the market. Thanks for watching. Okay, that was the video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you saw that stuff on my channel at the end. Uh, guys, if you're in the Lordstown, I need you to subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to keep these videos up. I'm in the process. I rushed to get this video out. I'm in the process of upgrading my production capabilities here. So uh, do press the like button. Give me a like. Uh, but uh, really, I need you to subscribe too, okay? Please subscribe. If you're in the Lordstown, you're in the Lordstown News my price estimates and the rest of it. By the way, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is a high risk investment. Do your own DD. This is a pre-revenue SPAC. Could result in catastrophic loss. Ride stock. Consult your professional financial advisor. All right, this is MXUX. Thanks a lot. Subscribe and like, guys, please. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is MXUX. We are lacking in EV humor. This is a video I did. Endurance, Cybertruck, Rivian. How do they differ? And I, the premise of this video is we're assigning a personality to each EV. And we're doing that by saying what movie star or movie character does each EV resemble most? And this is EV humor. And I'm going to play this for you. And I hope you, this is original humor. All you comics out there, you can copy this if you like. I don't care. Uh, let's hear what the joke is. Wait for the punchline. Rivian RT1. And here's what I come up with for the Rivian. There's a little too much hairspray on that mullet. Right? I don't know. Either you got a mullet or you don't. Well, what's with all the hairspray? The, the Rivian has a slight unidentifiable accent you can't put your finger on it but it, you know it's just slightly from somewhere else right it's not really American okay and um, the last uh, thing I come up for the Rivian is it's showing too much man boot. look at that grill and the whole thing it's it's hamming it up you know it's trying a little bit too hard you know, it's got the roll-out stove and, you know, I don't know. It's a pickup truck. Anyway, a little too much hairspray on the mullet. On the mullet. Unidentifiable slight accent. A little too much man boob. Trying a little too hard. What personality uh, best uh, matches the Rivian RT1? Got to be calm. For you kids out there, it's Wrath of Khan. I believe it's a Star Trek movie from 1992. And uh, the Rivian RT1 is definitely, definitely Khan. <laughs>